Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Just a note that if you're ever interested in private one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I do offer that service via Google Meet and Zoom. You are welcome to email me at the address here, and I will provide you with additional information about that service. In this figure, we have eight particles that form a square in which a distance d is given, and then the charge of each of the eight particles is given. In unit vector notation, we need to find the net electric field at the square's center. Looks a little daunting at first, but let's take a careful look at the diagram. So here once again is the diagram. We have gone ahead and have labeled the charges on each of the eight charges. And what we will do is look at pairs of these charges to show that due to symmetry, that their electric fields will cancel out and we can essentially disregard them. So for example, let's look at the pair of charges listed as Q1 and Q5. We can see that both charges have a magnitude of positive 3E charge. We are asked to calculate the electric field at the center of the square. Now the distance from Q1 to the center, which would be R1, is the same as the distance from charge five to the center, which we would call R5. They have the same distance because they are halves of the diagonal of a square. Now we note that their electric fields would be calculated using the following equation. It would be E is equal to K times the charge magnitude divided by the distance squared. Now we've already said that the distance for each of the two charges is the same. And of course the charge is the same as well. It's positive three E in both cases. The only other thing we have to make sure is true is that their directions are the same because an electric field is a vector quantity. So not only does it have a magnitude, but it has a direction. So let's look at the Q1 charge. Q1 is positive. So if we were at the center of the square, then the electric field produced by that positive Q1 charge would have to point away from the charge. Often professors tell their students to imagine putting a positive test charge at the location of interest and then ask yourself in which direction would that positive test charge move? Would it move towards Q1 or would it move away from Q1? Well, of course, opposite charges attract, but like charges repel. So since they would be like charges, they would repel. That means that there would be a force pushing this test charge away from Q1. But the same idea applies for Q5, which is positive. The test charge is positive, so they too would repel, and so the test charge would move away from Q5. You can see that these vectors are completely oppositely oriented, and therefore their directions are in opposition, so they would indeed cancel. So it's a long story perhaps, but basically the electric field produced by Q1 and the electric field produced by Q5 would cancel. So we're going to eliminate those electric field contributions, and we're basically going to remove Q1 and Q5 from the picture. Now you can see that a similar story will be told for charges Q3 and charges and in Q7. They have the same amount of charge, negative 5e. They are the same distance to the center of this square. Their directions would be in opposition to one another. Again, imagine putting a positive test charge at the center. That positive test charge would be attracted towards Q7, but it would also be attracted towards Q3. So the electric fields are in completely opposite directions. They are produced by equal amounts of charge, equidistant from the center. Therefore, they too cancel out. So let's get rid of Q3 and Q7. Now, by now, you can see where this is going for Q2 and Q6. Again, they are equidistant to the center. They have the same amount of charge, positive E, and their electric fields will be oppositely directed. You can show that to yourself by using the positive test charge. So we can get rid of those charges as well. So really, all we are left with is the two charges here. Now, we are still at the center. That's where we're trying to calculate the electric field. We look at Q4, which is negatively charged. So if we put a positive test charge at the center, then Q4 would draw that charge towards itself. It would attract it. So the electric field produced by Q4 points to the right. Now, similarly, looking at that positive test charge in the center, Q8 is positively charged as well, and therefore they would repel one another. So that means that the electric field produced by Q8 also points to the right. We're going to call that E8. So both of those electric fields point to the right, which means in unit vector notation, we can say that the total electric field is going to be E4 
plus e8, we're going to add them together because they are vectors pointing in the same direction. And that is the x direction, which in unit vector form is symbolized by i hat. There is no component of the electric field pointing in the y direction or the z direction. So we can disregard j hat and k hat in this computation. So now we have to start filling in the expression for the e4 and the e8. Now, Remember, the equation is above. I'm going to just drag it down here, but this is the equation we're using for the electric field produced by these two point charges. So for E4, we would have K times Q4, the magnitude of Q4, divided by the distance to the center squared. The distance to the center is going to be D. So in fact, here is Q4 right here. There's the center. You can see D is the distance from Q4 to the center. So this would be over D squared. And then we're gonna add E8, the electric field produced by charge eight. That's gonna be Q times the magnitude of Q8 divided by, well, it's the same distance. Look at Q8. It is also a distance of D to the center of the square. So that'll be over D squared. Notice for Q8, we are, excuse me, for Q4. Q4 is the one that is negative. Notice that when we plug in for Q4, we're not gonna plug in negative 2E. We're only plugging in the magnitude. So we're only plugging in, in as 2E. So you would have K multiplied by 2E over D squared plus K. And then Q8 had a magnitude of charge of just positive 1E. Again, we're just doing the magnitude, so you can just fill that in as 1E. And that was over D squared. This is all in the I hat or X direction. Now we can simplify this because we have a common denominator. We have, let's see, 2KE plus 1KE all over d squared and then we can simplify further can't we we can add those like terms in the numerator so now we're just going to be left with 3ke over d squared now we can plug in the numbers k is a universal constant as is e and d was given to us as two centimeters be careful there of course you need to convert that into meters by multiplying by 10 to the negative 2. so let's go ahead and plug in the known values so when we simplify that, we will see that the electric field is equal to approximately 1.08 times 10 raised to the negative 5. The electric field is measured in newtons per coulomb. And again, this is in the x direction, so we just write i hat. And this is the correct answer to the problem. So sometimes in these electric field problems, when you have an array of charges, you might look for some symmetry effects that might allow you to cancel out the electric field contributions from some of those charges. In this case, it greatly simplified our solution.